guys, it's Samantha again. You're here with YSP, the Young Scientist Program of USC, and I teach third grade normally at 32nd Street Magnet School. Today, we're going to be learning about evolution and natural selection, and we get to see what evidence we have to show that traits could be influenced by our environment. So, I've always wondered why my cute, cuddly kitty could possibly be related to this ferocious, scary lion. But if you look closely, they have many similar features. Evolution will tell us about the relationship between these two types of cats. Now for some important words. First is evolution. So evolution is the theory that all living things that exist today developed or came from earlier versions by passing on heritable traits. So in past weeks, you guys learned about heritable traits. So if you need help with that, you can go back and review the past video. Some other important vocabulary includes natural selection. So evolution usually happens by natural selection. And this is the process by which organisms that are more suited or better adapted to their environment survive. And when they survive better, they produce more offspring. So this just means that an animal that is a little better for his environment, so as we see at the bottom, you see the three different heights of giraffes, so the one that is taller is more likely to survive because he can reach the leaves at the very top. So in order for natural selection to happen, we need variation or differences. You can think of it like trying to select your favorite candy. You need to have options first. And then variations in genes means that there might be small changes in the individual's traits. This usually happens by chance. These differences can include different looks, structure, or behavior. The next word is adaptation. So an adaptation is a trait that will help a living thing be a better fit for their environment. For example, brown-haired bunnies would survive better in a forest environment because they blend in with their surroundings. They use camouflage, which you also learned about. So if a hawk came along, he would easily see the white bunny, and the white bunny would be more likely to be hunted than the brown bunny. So this adaptation means that the brown bunny is a better fit for his environment. Over time, through natural selection, species become more and more suited for their environments because the animals that are not well suited for the environment usually die off, and then the ones that are better suited for their environment produce more offspring or more babies, and those babies carry on their parents' traits. This is Charles Darwin, and he was a scientist that was well known for his work towards evolution. But let's check out some more scientists from today. Here's our scientist of the day. Biologist Danielle N. Lee is an assistant professor at the Southern Illinois University at Edwardsville. And she researches animal behavior and how it is shaped by ecology and evolution. Scientists, including Darwin, studied why animals within the same species looked similar, but also had different traits. In this case, we're looking at different bird beaks. See if you can spot some differences between the beaks. Some are thicker, some are longer, some are pointier. Let's see what these differences are all about and how they help the birds be better suited to their own environment. Now it's your turn. For today's activity, you will just need a mixture of some small items like pasta, erasers, beads, etc., whatever you can find, and a plate. Also have a variety of utensils on hand. Again, anything you can find. Here it is all together on the plate. As you can see, the little small items act like different little bird foods. Now we're going to be using a series of utensils that we had, and these utensils or tools are acting like the different bird beaks. Notice that each of the utensils has a different shape, just like different beaks have different shapes. Try to use each utensil and see which ones are better at picking up different items. For example, which one is the best at picking up the pasta or the worms? Which one is the best at picking up the tiny little seeds? Continue to try the different beaks. You can even time yourself to make it a little harder. Remember that natural selection chooses the trait that is most adapted for that environment. Birds that eat small seeds probably need a small beak, while birds that eat big things probably need a bigger beak. There is no such thing as a perfect beak. 
Every bird just needs a beak that gets the job done for them. Keep going, scientists. We're gonna speed it up a little here. Great job. See ya.